Vigo in midweek. Well, it's a, bit, it's a big week for Granada. They have come here and they've made seven changes to the side that drew nil-nil against Eibar before the recent international break. And the likes of Dimitri Folkier have come into the side. Juan Carlos, Diego Mainz. Uh, first team regulars like Alan Nyom, Insua and Javi Marquez all missing. And Cordoba, as you said, even even on the substitutes bench today. So it does look as though Abel Racino has got one eye on two big games coming up. Remember, there's the full round of league matches in midweek in La Liga this week. They travel, or rather they face Delta de Vigo in midweek. And then at the weekend, they've got another big game against Almeria. Another side who are down there at the wrong end of the table. And who, the good news for Malaga is that last night, Almeria got carted 4-1 at home to Levante. It's not been a terrible weekend down at the bottom for Levante. They've seen Cordoba lose, they've seen Almeria lose, so their direct rivals aren't exactly setting the world on fire. But you might wonder whether all of those changes are just going to make Real Madrid's task that little bit easier today in the Santiago Bernabeu. And remember, Madrid won 4-0 earlier in the campaign in Los Carmenes, in Granada, James scoring his first two goals in Spanish football in that game. Indeed, that victory for Granada came at the start of the season when Real Madrid began in spectacular fashion with the new signings the likes of James and Toni Cruz making an immediate impact. Ball goes straight through there to Oyer, who's got plenty of proof, former Barcelona B-team regular, sort of third-choice keeper at Barcelona. Well, that tended to mean he didn't really get to play ever. Um, <laughs> This is one of the reasons he moved on to past his new. Luka Modric should be back to his best now after the international break. Real Madrid had 16 players on international duty. A lot of them played last weekend, but most of them didn't play in midweek. For example, Cristiano didn't play for Portugal away to, to Cape Verde Islands. They must have actually lost. Yeah, the Portuguese manager several Real Madrid players to miss the second of their two internationals. Actually, one player who did do very well. Hang on a second, as we have Juan Carlos, former Madrid, youngster coming forward, reconverted from winger into left back, giving the ball away, however, to Luka Modric, and there is Modric, just checking. Not able to slow it down to his own pace. There's Varane in for the injured Pepe today. Nothing too serious for Pepe, should be okay for midweek when Madrid travel to Vallecas. It is James. Cristiano, his Colombian teammate, but decent defending there by Folkier. Babin. Looks to play that one out from the back, but I was going to say good battling from Real Madrid winning the ball back. In fact, it's El Arabe who's putting the ball out wide to Ivan, yes. And that shot, however, is deflected tamely into the arms of Ike Casillas. Shot came in from Candelais. You get the feeling Granada are going to have to make the most of every single opportunity they get inside the Real Madrid half today because there's not going to be too many of them. Gareth Bale to Cristiano. It's intercepted well. And in the end, complications and forced to concede. Throw in for Real Madrid. Bale was... So <laughs> was um, Back to his best when he played for Wales just over a week ago. There he is looking to take that pass. In fact, it's Cristiano who controls it. But Gil Manzano, the referee today, already ruling it out for offside. There were some comments in midweek that Gareth Bale did look a little bit more comfortable playing for Wales than he does playing for Real Madrid at the moment. I don't know whether that's to do with the environment or the players surrounding him that he knows better. But he did seem to be much more confident in himself playing for the national side. Well, he was able to play more of a free role rather than rather than out on the right, which is, I still think, not his best position, let's be honest. Granada looking to be forceful in these opening minutes. There, Retura's ball goes out for a goal kick. Robert Ivanjev, one of several changes made in the winter by Granada. There's always a bit of a swinging door policy at the club when it comes to players coming in and out, but... Even this January, there was quite a lot of players coming in, even by they, Granada standards. They tend to come in from Udinese and go out to Watford, don't they? Exactly. For some strange reason. So, Abel Retino, the Granada coach, has got a big job to do turning things around. Former Atletico Madrid goalkeeper, 
best choice for a long time in the Vicente Calderon and since then made a reasonable career in coaching several clubs, it has to be said. Never tends to stay more than a year or so. It's one of those managers that clubs tend to bring in when they've sacked the manager that they started the season with and they're looking for someone to help them avoid the drop. Lovely ball out from Modric there, but once again the offside flag goes up against Karim Benzema. And correct decision once again, Linesman had the cut of the turf to help him out. It's in fact Resino's second spell at Granada, he was brought in back in 2012 after they sacked coach Fabri Gonzalez with the idea of avoiding relegation. Which they did. And he managed to achieve that, but wasn't rewarded with an extended contract. And he did the same the season after, coming in at Delta de Vigo after they sank Paco Herrera. He helped Delta de Vigo avoid relegation on the last day of the season. But again, not the kind of coach that clubs think that they can build a solid project around. He tends to come in, saves the club from relegation, and then is shown the door. That is a nice, ho that is a nice holiday till the following <laughs> January. Exactly. Real Madrid once again. Ramos. One of several players in the Madrid squad actually was a game, or was a booking away from suspension. It's Ramos, Arbeloa, Tony Cruz, James, and Ronaldo were all one booking away from missing a match. Ramos gives that one away. Once again, Ibanez looking to work things in the middle. And good battling there from Ramos who's pushed forward but his distribution just lets him down it's a late challenge there on Cruz from Fran Rico Cruz will possibly have been grateful for the international break he's played lots more minutes than he's ever been used to in his career that's one of the things from Madrid seem to have rotated much less this season than in previous campaigns something that Ancelotti tends not to be a great fan of is club squad rotations. He didn't do that much chopping and changing when he was at Chelsea either, has to be said. Indeed, Ancelotti rotating less even than Jose Mourinho, another manager who's not really a big fan of rotating his squad, but you get the feeling that some of the players are perhaps feeling it now in this latter part of the season, Tony Cruz being one of them. And that's because not even that's being knocked out of the cup quite early on. And a lot of these players played a big part in last summer's World Cup, Tony Cruz, of course, James, of course. James as well, Tony Cruz part of the German World Cup winning squad, so it's been a long old season. Looking for Benzema, this cross on the far post, Karim Benzema! Got a good contact on that, the Frenchman, but didn't have much of an angle, lovely cross from James, and decent effort from Benzema. Benzema has been in form in recent matches, he's scored in his last three league games, was probably Real Madrid's most impressive player at camp now, along with Luka Modric against Barca in that 2-1 defeat. Benzema looking to take some of the pressure off Gareth Bale and Cristiano Ronaldo, who haven't quite been in the form this season, or in this part of the season that they were earlier in the campaign. It's just that little question mark about Ronaldo's knee, whether he has got a slightly long-standing problem, which tends to flare up on him now and then. Anyhow, Marcelo. James once again looks to put the ball into the area. Bale moves for it timidly, but once again, oh yeah, confident. Coming out of his six-yard box to make the claim. Gives it to Juan Carlos. Itura. If you, if, you into, if you were a betting man, Itura might be one of your candidates for a booking this, this afternoon. It is now officially afternoon in the Bernabeu de Chilean. Itura. Certainly. One of a... Oof, that's not a bad effort. Well, I think possibly power was more the issue rather than accuracy. I was just going to say, Idorra, one of a certain type of feisty, shall we say, Chilean midfielders we saw... In the Gary Medal School. In the Gary Medal School. That was Ruben Rochino with the shot player who's has had a spell in England with Blackburn Rovers. Also had times at Saragossa former Barcelona B-teamer. He has scored a lot of goals in the youth teams at Football Club Barcelona. One time he was thought there was a possible member of the future first team, but things didn't really turn out for 
Rocina, he flew with a flight. Oh, my word. That is a little bit of what you would call a defensive mix-up, and Gareth Bale nearly taking advantage of it. Let's have a look at this one again. Just breaks the offside decision. Folkier, who, no, it's Juan Carlos who leaves it. And that could so easily have been the first goal of the game. So, um, lack of communication there between the goalkeeper oh yeah, and Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos began his career as a midfielder, but he has played quite a lot at left back this season, so he doesn't really have the excuse that he's not familiar playing in the back four. Maybe they're putting him on the left today just to try and counter Gareth Bale's pace. Not the quickest pair of central defenders today in Mainz and Bahrain. Mainz, Mainz is experienced, shall we say, which is a, a polite way of saying he's getting on a bit. And Baba is in the physical mould of central defenders. Former Alcorcon stopper, Alcorcon just to the southwest of the capital. Sally Kerr is going to be a throw in for Granada. We just had just past the 10 minute mark. No score yet between Real Madrid and Granada in the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. There you see the um, director's box. Nicely in the shade. No direct sunshine for the VIPs. Mm -hmm. Florentino Perez making himself very popular in Bilbao and Barcelona again by refusing to allow this stadium to be used for the final of the Copa del Rey. Without ever giving any explanation why, just not being able to be used, which is, un is very harsh, being the largest neutral ground in Spain. Yeah, it's interesting what happened, isn't it? What, what if one day Real Madrid, next time Real Madrid get to the final and they want a neutral ground, if every club had the same attitude, where would they play? Well, I think there will probably be recriminations. I think other clubs now would be reluctant to allow their ground to be used if Real Madrid reach the final but there's a very easy solution to this problem you simply name the venue before the final at the start of the season well, hopefully sooner or later unfortunately it's going to be later rather than sooner the stadium the Peineta in Madrid will be finished which will be Atletico Madrid's new home should have 70,000 capacity that should be perhaps hang on a second as Cristiano fires into the side netting maybe that should just be the permanent venue or simply, as in the Champions League, you simply name the venue at the start of the season and should the club who play in that stadium reach the final, then so be it. has happened to Bayern Munich a few seasons, Mike. I see Cristiano Ronaldo showing step over. We haven't seen from him too much in recent matches, just firing into the side netting. He's scored an amazing amount of goals first half of the season, especially before Christmas, but since then, they've tried up somewhat. Not to such an extent that I think Leo Messi has overhauled about 15 goals behind to overtake him in the race to be top scorer. He's just one goal behind Messi now, isn't he, Ronaldo? If I'm mistaken, not mistaken, 31 goals in La Liga. 31 Messi, goals. Messi, 32. So a little added incentive there for Cristiano is Modric to Gareth Bale. Once again, shepherded well there by the Granada defence, Bale, a little complaint to the referee, Hill Manzano. Oh, yeah. It's well met by Varane, the Frenchman. Wins the second challenge and Marcelo gets it back to Ica. Casillas, poor distribution though from Ica. Here come Granada again, is Ibanez. And that is not far away from Ica's right hand post few whistles for the real madrid goalkeepers was perhaps i thought a bit unfairly singled out for criticism after the last defeat against barcelona Di granada with the first real opportunity of the game they're gonna have to try and take these opportunities when they come around because then they're gonna have too many robert ibanez one of several players brought in in january by the clubs and from valencia a good opportunity and that'll give the Visitor's heart. It's Cristiano again to James. Takes a deflection corner for Real Madrid to approach the 15 minute mark. I don't think Abel Racino will be too disappointed about the way the game has started. It's really begun rather slowly. Here they have a corner. First corner of the match. 
Decent delivery, and it was Varane who got on, got on the end of it. Didn't actually know a great deal about it, but it's gone out for another corner. Rafael Varane, a little bit frustrated perhaps these last couple of years by the form of Pepe and, and Ramos. Possibly would have liked to have played more French international. Had problems with injury as well, Rafael Varane, in the last year and a half. Cruz takes the corner. It's a good delivery again, and it was Benzema who got up. It's half cleared, but only as far as Arbeloa. For Kier clears that one. And James keeps it in. Rafael Varane burst onto the scene with a couple of tremendous performances in Clásicos a couple of seasons back. Playing for Real Madrid when he was still a teenager. And everyone thought perhaps he would be a fixture in the side for the next couple of seasons. I think Real Madrid just building on the left with Gareth Bale. Shot takes a deflection, but in the end, it's a good claim by Oyer on that cross. It's looped up awkwardly. And just that really well because Cristiano Ronaldo was right in there quickly. Always fancy the keeper, but look how much Ronaldo leaps there because Oyer is jumping with his arms in the air and he still only just gets to the height of Cristiano. And to do that perfectly, otherwise, the number, eight, number seven would have been right in. Solid start from the Granada netman. Yeah, as you say, Varanda had then suffered a couple of knee problems which have just slowed him down. There's lots of talk that he might be moving to the Premier League next season, but it'll, I think whatever happens depends on the price and A and B medicals, because if you're going to be spending the money that's been talked about. Exactly, and also I think depends on Real Madrid bringing other players in because they'll want to keep their strength and depth at the back. So if they're going to have a player like Varango, they'll want to. At least bring a player in. Of Chance for Bale. Equal quality. Kind of Bale with a shot that seems to take a deflection in the end. Yeah, it's gone and for a corner. I was going to say, it looked otherwise as if it snatched it a long way wide, but. That explains where it was closer to the Gunner flag than the other Fowler's goal. Well, turning the screw a little bit, Real Madrid now. This time it was Benzema who heads wide, and it's a goal kick. Benzema. Quite sure about why. I think Rochina, who just managed to get a foot in as Bale was about to strike that ball. It appeared as though maybe should have been a corner, but the decision has gone Granada's way. See him playing it short, just allowing Madrid to pressure high up the field. Decent header from Rafael from Ar Alvaro Arbelo, first choice today, just gives it a quick chance to talk about a uh, midweek, Real Madrid spending a lot of money on the Porto right-back, um, Danilo. It's um, been, uh, been reported as 39 million euros with all the commission and everything is included. But if you buy players from either Pico or Porto, you're never going to get them cheap. Well, they, they got 80 million for, for James, which is pretty good. The question is, though, the interesting thing is, obviously, people saying, well, why are Madrid spending that much money on Danilo, who is, is, is oh, once again, a strange clearance there from Varane, rebounds into the arms of Ica. When you've got in your side the first choice Spanish right back at the moment, which is Dani Carvajal, who, interestingly, as I said, sometimes in Madrid you do tend to over-politicise things, but it will be commented that the player who would be the one to miss out with Danilo's arrival is rested. Carvajal for me has been one of the standing players this season for Real Madrid. Oh, good split, can't second good run from Luka Modric, turns brilliantly. Shot was blocked though. Maybe just dropped off a wee bit in the last month or so, Carvajal, but it's still slightly surprising. And I mean, most people think that Arvaloa, obviously the veteran, will be the player to move on. Still, it's been a great signing out, by the way. It cost €4 million Euros in 2009. And basically, it's been the backbone of the, of the side for a long time. It's only now with Carvajal's sort of excellent uh, well, return to the club that he's lost out. But you know, when you consider how much money Madrid has spent on other players, just €4 million for Arbaloa, who's done a great job. It's really value for money. Probably the best signing of the last 15 years. And just got there as Candeles looked to thread that ball through. 
opportunity there for Granada. They had men over. And Candeas, another player brought in in January from the German second division, Nuremberg. Just picked the wrong option at the wrong time. So Madrid not having things completely all their own way. Given away there by Abeloa. Cristiano looks to break the offside trap, but doesn't. Offside flag is down there in the bottom right of your screen. Cristiano there, very graciously squaring the ball to Benzema when he teamed the flag up, I think. Benzema and Bale also offside there. No. Yes, once again, those lines across the pitch make it easy for us. Still, 20 minutes gone, no score. Madrid on top. Not really forced a difficult save yet from Oyer. Granada have shown signs of losing one or two problems when they've broken quickly. Madrid caught out at times with another breaking. Just to Excellent. put this into context, Granada have two wins in the last 24 league games, and their last win was on the 31st of January. But as so often happens, these, ten, these teams te sometimes tend the resistance lasts until the first goal. And then they do find it very hard to get back. Granada did hold Real Madrid to 0 0 at half time last season, but lost now to two second half goals. One from Cristiano Ronaldo and one from Karim Benzema. A routine victory for Real Madrid. I think Abel Resina would be delighted if he could keep it at 0 0 until half time. Exactly, still very tight at the bottom of the uh, table in Spain, but you get the feeling this season you're not going to lead, need as many points as normal to stay up for, for, for a variety of factors. Marcelo on the overlap, that's a great ball, and this should be no! It isn't! It's Arba Loa who came in unmarked on the far post. Great overlap from Marcelo. Nobody had picked up Arbaloa here. And he puts it wide. Arbaloa just a little bit too casual, I think. The Granada players are pointing to a possible shove inside the six yard box by Cristiano Ronaldo. It does look as if there's a bit of a push there, but the referee hasn't Mainz. given it on Mainz. The referee didn't give it, and then Arbaloa sauntering in at the back post. A little bit too casual. Uh, Granada could probably think themselves lucky that the ball fell to the Madrid you know, right back. I think Abelo will possibly fancy his chances of scoring that best chance of the game for Real Madrid. There's a bit of skill there from James working inside. There you see the possession 64% for Carlo Ancelotti's side, just 36 for Granada. One of the things about these midday kickoffs is that some sides play them more often than others, such as Rayo, Getafe, etc. It does change a little bit your pre-match routine. And if you're only doing it once or twice a season like Real Madrid, sometimes players find it a little bit difficult to adapt with stuff like eating times. You have to get up and have your pasta at nine in the morning. And I'm not sure how many of you really fancy would fancy a plate of pasta at that early hour of the day. There have been a few Real Madrid performances this season and last season when they have played on Sunday at 12 o'clock, the early kickoff, and it has taken them a while to get going. It's almost as if they're sort of an hour behind and it takes them a while to wake up and get into their rhythm. Basically, you have got to get up early. You've got to have a solid meal inside, you know, do a bit of carb packing. I think the players, though, used to so many different kickoff times in Spanish football that it's difficult for them to get into exactly. a consistent pattern. Because then the next in midweek, obviously, it'll be a 10 o'clock kickoff on which from Madrid in Vallecas. It's a decent ball on the left from Juan Carlos. Marcelo clears, skips past Candeles. And then just dwells on the ball, allowing the recent arrival to rob possession. He's had complaints about it, Marcelo. Doesn't look as does a foul to me. Falkier. No foul or not. Ibanez. Nothing too much of an effort to get back either. And in the end, well cut out by... Cruz who got back to cover and the game's just opening up a little bit for Real Madrid as Marcelo strolls back into his own half. This is not necessarily a bad thing for Madrid. Here's Cristiano just overran the ball. Itura made the challenge and they're just trying to slow things down again. Probably not in Mal in Granada's interest to speed the game up and get caught with a three against four. 
Oh, but the game is getting a little bit stretched here. Time just hope Marcelo breaking forward there from what was second situation for Granada. And Granada going immediately back on the attack. Fran Rico. So just slowing things down. So across to Baben. Pass statistics. Budud obviously moving the ball around more than their rivals and more effectively as well. You have to respect that at the home, Real Madrid against 99% of sides will have more of the ball here in the Bernabeu. Cruz put Gareth Bale through, he's not got much of an angle, Bale, but scores and that will do him a world of good. 25 minutes gone and Gareth Bale carries on in the Bernabeu where he left off with Wales opening the scoring and gets good support, just what he needs from Arbeloa. Good finish from Gareth Bale, but I think if we see the replay, there's just a moment hesitation there from goalkeeper Oya. I think maybe had he committed himself fully, he could have got there before the Welshman, but he just seemed to hesitate, and that gave Bale the Let's opportunity. Doesn't seem to be anything in this, really. It, you, I think what he, he expects minds to make the challenge. Bale just that bit quicker than the defender. Wants it a bit more. Mines should have done better. But Bale, you've got to say, full marks for commitment. And then he keeps a cool head because he hasn't scored in the Bernabeu, really. He's been struggling. Well, struggling for a acceptance. And that's exactly what he needs. Not just here, taking it round the keeper, but then keeping calm and making nicely. sure he finishes. And Idurra does the old... And the splits on the post if we see the replay here. Oh! I don't want to see that too many times. <laughs> Thanks for drawing my, my attention to that one. Hey, he seems to have been... Um, he's got up all right in the post, doesn't seem to be damaged, so... Well, we're saying he's a feisty tough character, isn't he? So, anyhow, we were saying so how often the first goal yes. can be so important. Is it going to be important? No, that's a good challenge. From Rafael Varane. Bale with his 13th league goal of the season. You know, for a player who's been criticised, it's not bad, is it? No, uh, that's his second goal in succession in the Bernabeu in the league. Scored in the 2 0 win with Levante, but prior to that, hadn't scored since the middle of January. He's been on a bit of a lead run, similar to his teammate Cristiano Ronaldo. Candeles. Not a bad ball to the far post, not great marking, and there maybe Banyez will be a little bit disappointed with the contact he got on that ball. Could have turned that back into the six-yard box there over Ivanyev. Good cross in from Candace. One footed. And ah, that meant over. Baban was up for the corner. Probably Ivanyev was there as well, but didn't get hold of it as he would have liked. Slight lack of marking there from the Madrid defence. The sort of thing that maybe maybe Messi might have punished but Candace didn't. Here's Gareth Bale again. Might have to cut inside. Now goes the other way this time. He's got out of a lower in support. Itura. It's a little bit feisty between him and out of a lower. Free kick. Gareth Bale there. The ball just seemed to hold up on the turf as he went through. Oh, no. So many problems with the pitch here at Real Madrid. Usually, we saw it being accurate. watered. We saw it being watered pre-game, so usually one of the best pitches in Spanish football. So, Baran, Tuiki Casillas. Top sides these days place a lot of importance on the quality of the playing surface, and they don't want to. They want it short and they want it quick and nicely watered. And they want their own ground to be in perfect conditions as well because they don't want to be well, used of hypocrisy when they go to it is one of the things, smaller though, grounds. That's why it is home advantage though, isn't it? Because, you know, you <laughs> if you have spent your money on your players, hang on a second, it's Cristiano. Takes a deflection over for a corner. If you spent money on your players, you want the playing surface to be as good for them at home as possible. However, if you're a smaller club, you're not going to make it as easy as possible for these players, so you leave it a little bit longer, you make it a little bit drier, don't you, when you're playing teams like Madrid and Barcelona? I mean, that's why you play at home. We're not talking about leaving it knee-high, we're talking about leaving another three or four millimetres on the surface. Cruz with the corner, decent corner as well. It was Varane on the far post. 
corner for Granada defender. I think it's going to be another corner. So James, left footed. Cleared by Fran Rico. Punted back by Marcelo. It's no offside against Ramos, but confusing with other players in the penalty area there. I think Cristiano Ronaldo would win offside, but he let the ball run for Ramos. That's a great ball. This should be the second. Well, it isn't yet. Still Cristiano. 2-0 to Real Madrid. And that just about confirms what we said. Lots of teams hang on to the first game, to the first goal, and then it all tends to go a little bit floppy. 2-0 for Real Madrid. Cristiano Ronaldo scores his 32nd goal of the season. We've seen before Cristiano Ronaldo in a little bit of a slump. He scored Not in five league games of 14 in 2015. Here, Benzema just taking a little bit too much time. James does really well, spots Cristiano just outside him. It's a good cross. Mark, look at the marking there, or the not marking. On James, nice little one two. Good play from Real Madrid. Granada, don't think they'll be very happy with some of the defending there. Now, Alvaro Rosino is a man who puts a lot of emphasis on discipline at the back. And it wasn't a good example of that from the visitors. Diego Mines failing to clear the ball properly. But if you are ch changing your defence for this game, you can't expect the most disciplined deform performance. No. You're not going to expect the most coordinated performance, are you? If you've got maybe Murillo and Insua who are regulars out. Murillo to pick up a knock. And for Colombia during the recent international break. I think that's the reason why perhaps Alvaro left him on the bench. But Diego Mines, plenty of experience. He'll be disappointed in his inability to get the ball clear there. 2 0 down now. 1 0, he still felt Granada possibly had a goal in them in this game. But asking Abel Racino's side to score twice here in the Bernabeu, I think he is a bit of a tall order. To be yeah. honest, I think it's always a bit dangerous to put your money where your mouth is, but I think we're more likely to see the Easter Bunny hopping across the pitch than to see Granada get anything from this. Offside flag is up. It's just starting to open up nicely for Real Madrid. Granada, let's just say groggy after conceding two goals. A bit of a decision there. The just five defense. minutes, yeah. And the, what they're doing there, they're pushing the defence a long way forward. If you've got players like Cruz and Modric controlling midfield for Real Madrid, pushing a defence forward, leaving spaces behind you is not always a successful policy. Bale. Baban. Find the ball there from Bale just behind Karim Benzema. I think number lower on the overlap would have been the better option. Yeah, Madrid, I think they sense they can get this game over and done with by half time. Reserve a bit of strength for neck for midweek. Let's remember they have to play in midweek. There's a round of games here in Spain. And Madrid are just got a short trip south of the city to play Rayo. It should be entertaining. Rayo in good form at the moment. Another victory this weekend or uh, Friday night rather away at Ava. Rayo is safe. Basically, I think I think 36 points will probably keep you up this year in Spain. You're looking at it, Granada. Well, there's a question about what will happen with Almeria. Will they have three points deducted for non-payment of a player? Um, if they do, they're on 22, I think. I can envisage a scenario in which it Almeria goes on until August. It goes on until August. <laughs> Almeria go down by two points, and all sorts. Basically, it's something that needs to be sorted out now, because. Some league tables have other one side in the final relegation side position, others have Almeria in it, and basically it, it just has to be sorted out. Otherwise, you just don't know where you stand. And also, it, all the other clubs need to know exactly where they stand exactly. in relation to the relegation zone. I don't want to be suddenly surprised with the decision from next August that they are, in fact, going to be playing in the second division next season. Yeah, okay, it's just got to be sorted. There's lots of things that are going to have to be sorted over the next few months in Spain, to be brutally honest. Um, opening up very nicely for Madrid. Cristiano looking for the 1-2. Once again, Babin half clears. Candace doesn't really clear it effectively. It comes to Cruz. Madrid camping outside the Granada penalty area. Benzema unmarked on the far post. Oh, didn't quite find it, but once again the marking from the full-backs. Fantastic. Could be better. Yeah. Fantastic. Juan Carlos there 
Just getting sucked into the middle and leaving Benzema free. Not for the first time. Fortunately for Granada, the ball just bisected Cristiano Ronaldo and Benzema. See replay of Gareth Bale spinning away from Juan Carlos. A worrying moment for Granada. Yeah, it's taken a while to find the strike, but they're in full flow now, and you wouldn't be ruling out a third goal before the break. That's a nice turn. Fortunately, he's ended up Rochina going back to where he started, and it's with Luka Modric, starting for Real Madrid. Yes, they're going back very quickly to Spain. There's not just the questions of Almeria, there's also a few match-fixing cases in court at the moment involving probably not it's Zaragoza, Levante, Betis, Osasuna, some of these second division sides but some of them also like Betis battling to a promotion back and unless these are sorted out quickly it's just going to be very confusing and very messy. Marcelo, oh yeah half Paris and that is the third goal for Real Madrid and it's Cristiano on hand to punish Oh yeah, Real Madrid for parrying it Again. into exactly where you shouldn't be parrying it. Ronaldo defensively paying the price. I think Real Madrid just up the tempo in the last few minutes, winning the ball back with greater efficiency in midfield. And there, a good overlap from Marcelo down the left hand side. Good cross in, and oh yeah, pouring at the ball really. And Cristiano Ronaldo lurking. One of the best strikers of the ball in world football. If you, if you look at the way he actually seeds the ball to Marcelo, goes that goes horizontally across the area. Nobody goes with him. There he is, unmarked. Thank you very much. Goalkeeper really should have decided either to punch that or take it. In the end, he didn't either. Just teeing the ball up in the air, really. Volleyball style for Cristiano Ronaldo. Got two goals now. Moves him on to. 33 in the league. Makes him top scorer for the moment ahead of Leo Messi. Interesting to see how Messi is tonight. Lots of talk about his inflamed foot, which stopped him playing for Argentina. Boquier. Well read from Abeloa, so exactly what Fulquier was going to do. He knew before Fulquier himself. Wide open prairies in the middle of the Bernabeu at the moment. Just what Real Madrid will be looking for. Possibly the heat at 32 degrees. Not a lot of wind here gets down into the the pitch at the Bernabeu. Maybe Granada just starting to feel a little bit in their legs. Tends to happen, doesn't it? You get the second, third goal goes in those legs. All of a sudden feel a wee bit more tired than they did when you were hanging in at nil-nil. You know, you've got... Second 45 minutes to come after the break as well. I think we were talking about the goal. The managers rather mind being on the games coming up in midweek and next weekend. I think the players might be thinking Oof. about that as well. 4 0. That's Ronaldo's hat trick. Well, again, I think Ronaldo now will just want a half time whistle to come as quickly as possible. Ronaldo. <laughs> Forget the half time whistle, they want the full time whistle to go as quickly as possible. Cristiano Ronaldo, given time, space, absolutely lashes that one into the back of the net. About 38 minutes for a hat trick. He's actually scored his hat trick in just eight minutes. Let's have a look here. Once again. One or two questions maybe about the goalkeeper, a little bit slow. Well, yeah. Nobody actually closes him down. He's allowed to cut inside and hit it powerfully. Gets a bit of an effect. I think you question the goalkeeper. You're questioning the defence, but you can't question that. Yeah, you are questioning the goalkeeper from that angle. Look at that Still angle. a powerful shot. Takes a bit of an effect. A really top flight goalkeeper. It's got to keep should, it out. Should be able to deal with that kind of shot from distance. I suppose if you're going to commit an error, it's got to be to concede your side's fourth goal against them in the Bernabeu. Oh dear. Not looking very good. Here they come again. Benzema. Goes out for a corner. Granada absolutely on the ropes here. Begging for that half-time whistle. Benzema just running out of turf over on that left-hand side. Once again, another surrendering possession. Far too easily a midfielder then. Plenty of space. 
behind the defense. Mainz. It's collected by Sergio Ramos. One of the things to bear in mind is in Spain, it's not overall goal average which decides, it's head-to-head -head goal average, which isn't bad news for Real Madrid. There's no need for them to go on adding scoring goal after goal because at the end that could decide the title against Barcelona. Good news for Real Madrid is that they do have a better head-to-head -head goal average than Barca, winning 3-1 in the Bernabeu earlier this season before losing 2-1 in the Camp Nou. Some of those chances that Neymar missed a fortnight ago might end up being expensive for Barca. And really, when we talk about the gap to the top being four points, it really is four points because if Real Madrid can level things up in the league table, then they would be in top spot. And Barca next weekend have to travel up at home in midweek, but next weekend they have to travel to Sevilla who haven't lost a home in 31 matches. So Madrid have to go there as well, but it certainly is a... If you were looking at the calendar thinking there, they might drop points, Sevilla is certainly one of those places. Or oh, yet... Yeah. If you look at the fixture list, Real Madrid's running, it's slightly easier than Football Club Barcelona. The toughest game they've got is maybe with taking Valencia at home. They do have to play against Valencia in the Santiago Bernabeu. That's well, all Real Madrid at the moment. It's Benzema. Takes a deflection. Pandesh to El Arabi. Baran now stepping forward, making a rare incursion into rival half. Marcelo. Tony Cruz. Benzema. Gareth Bale who opened the scoring. Looks to pull it back for his companion. Cut out by the defence this side, Cristiano laments of the fact that the ball didn't actually come across to him. I think he fancies his chances today of adding to his total and putting a bit of pressure on Leo Messi. El Arabi. Goes out for a Real Madrid goal kick, apart from chance from Ibanez which went wide of the post. Ikes had a very, very placid afternoon, early afternoon in the Santiago Bernabeu. Uh, you can imagine he'll be in for a very placid second half as well. And with Racine, I'm sure, will just be happy to limit the damage here in the second half. Four nil down after less than 40 minutes. The thing is, once again, it's that head-to-head -head goal difference is also a factor at the bottom of the table as well. So, in Granada, it's really in terms of going up, staying up or down, doesn't really matter if they lose 10 nil here at the moment. Benzema looks to get on the end of that one. Oyer does cut the ball out. It did look as if he collided with Mainz on the way through, but with the keeper collecting the ball, there was no room for controversy. Falkier. Indeed, that rule does seem to be a bit of a disincentive at times for teams to keep it tight. Keep it tight at the back, as you say. Overall goal average only comes into effect if the two teams... Oh, El Arabi thunders that shot in from absolutely nowhere. And I'd like to see the replay. Got a feeling that may have crossed the line. I don't know. It was difficult to see. This, I got the impression as well, but it does sometimes fool you. Woof. Don't know. I don't think it did. I think it did. You can get another replay. I think that should have been a goal there for Granada. They deserved it for the effort from El Arabi. Had we, had we had goal line technology that exists in certain other leagues, then we wouldn't need to, to make this point. And again, I'd like to see a replay from a different angle. Or just slower motion. Sometimes it does fool the eye, though, when the ball bounces down quickly. Yeah, thank you very much. Nah, you see, I don't think that's over. It's all got to be over. I don't think it is. Uh, no, yeah, from this angle, it just looks like the ball bounces right on the line. The worst, worst, worst one I've seen in Spain was in this ground when Pablo Orbaiz for Athletic Bilbao midfielder scored an absolute screamer from a 40 yards, bounced about a yard and a half over, and the linesman didn't give it. Uh, very difficult to see if the 
possible well that's crossed the line yeah, I don't think it has though. so is it Thank possible God. for the linesman because he's got to be in line with the last with the last defender for the offside in this sort of occasion so if a shot comes from distance it's very hard to see but I think on this occasion it's the right call because you think the ball's traveling at about 50 60 miles an hour and the rest it's just a fortunate that's happened at 4 0 rather than 0 0, but I don't think it was over the line. Tremendous strike from El Arabi, who's done a little else in this first half. But... Rochina attempts the through ball. Gareth Bale over the top. Here's Cristiano. He was just looking to help that on to Benzema. In the end, the ball goes through to oh, yeah, 10 seconds left of normal time in the first half. I can't see Phil Manzano adding that much more after the break. In fact, he hasn't there. 45 minutes gone. It was a bit of a slow start from Real Madrid. 25 minutes than needed before Gareth Bale took advantage of some pretty sloppy defending to take the ball past oh, yeah. 30 minutes, Ronaldo made it 2 0. Six minutes. Yeah behind them as quickly as possible. They hope that this will be the fastest 45 minutes of the season. And they'll turn their attention to those upcoming Greek games against Delta and against Almeria. Game against Almeria in particular next weekend will be a vital one. As the Andalusians are another side down. The wrong end of the table battling against possible relegation. Some more Cristiano Ronaldo hat-trick stats, if you like. There's the 24th in the league for Real Madrid for Cristiano Ronaldo, equaling the record held by Leo Messi. And it was his 28th in all competitions for Real Madrid, including another record on held by Alfredo Di Stefano. Well, there you have it. There you have it in the numbers as well. 25 minutes, Gareth Bale, 30, 36 and 38 for Cristiano. I get the feeling Cristiano will be hungry for a couple more so he can put a bit of hurt onto Leo Messi in that battle for the Pichichi Award for the top scorer in La Liga this season. The rest of it will be quite interesting to see how Carlo Ancelotti, whose side have got to play Rayo Vallecano in midweek, basically handles his squad. I'm pretty sure he'll be very tempted to rest players. Certainly someone like Tony Cruz should think would be one you'd want to be resting if possible. And then the likes of Elia Ramendi on the bench. Chicharito as well, Jesse. Chicharito, who um, I had an interview, interesting interview when he was at on international duty with Mexico, saying he um, uh, not expressing exact satisfaction at his position at Real Madrid. I think he expected to play a little bit more, but obviously the way things are going, the goals at Real Madrid are scoring. It's very hard to see how he's going to be in the first choice side. Obviously Madrid getting knocked out of the cup quite early by Atletico, possibly took away the chance of him playing, getting some extra minutes. A little surprising that he thinks that he was going to play more at Real Madrid than he did at Manchester United because he wasn't exactly the first choice when he was in the Premier League playing under Alex Ferguson. Still a striker, I think, would score if he was a regular starter in a good side, would still score upwards 15, 20 goals a season, though. Needs to, start, needs to get game time, regular game time, does Chicharito. And it'll be interesting to see looking at the bench whether. Real Madrid will obviously look to say, I'm pretty sure they'll look to rest Cruz if possible. You'd be wanting to see perhaps players such as Chicharito, Jesse get some time under his belt as Granada make a rare surge forward. They had that shot against the crossbar just before the break from El Arabi. Yeah, just warming Ica's hands. As Cambé is coming forward, making just his second start of the season since joining the club in January. From Nuremberg, this is a bit of a trial for him. Ika spills that shot. Ruben Brotina with the effort. Bring the ball up deep. And again, and we saw some of the dodgy goalkeeping in the first half. On the other end, from Oya Olazaba. And we've seen Ika and Messias. Spill that shot. This is the first effort from Candeas. And he had that poor throw out in the first half, which gave up gave Ibanez his chance as well. So not possibly not on the top of his game, Ika, at the moment. But today, possibly not going to be decisive in the result. It hasn't really been 
challenge for the number one spot this season by Keylor Navas in the way many people thought when the Levante man arrived in the summer. Well, the thing is, it's very hard, though, if you're a keeper, if you're a reserve keeper, even if you train well and you're doing a good job in training. If the other, if you're still winning matches, the coach tends not to drop you. We, we just saw Yaramendi warming up there, the former Real Sociedad midfielder. That, there is. Fernando substitutes warming up. Arbeloa. Looks for the 1 2 from Benzema. That'll be a throw in for Real Madrid. Real Madrid is chewing that option. They're playing one goalkeeper in the Champions League, one goalkeeper in the league. It's been, well, it's really been in fashion over the last couple of seasons. Luis Enrique has adopted it at Barca this season with Mario Bravo playing in the league and Mark Andre Thurston playing in the Cup in the Champions think, League. Do you think that is because? Bravo, I, I get the I, I have my own feeling about that. Hang on a second, Granada just looked to come forward. I get the feeling that Ster Stegen would have been first choice in both competitions had he not started the season injured. Bravo came in in the league, did well, and there was no reason to drop him. But Ter Stegen was probably the player who signed to be first choice, therefore you had to fit him in somewhere. Cristiano. Looks to go for glory rather than pulling it back to his teammate. Ah, that's a goal kick. It's kind of Ronaldo. His eyes on the fourth here. The ball by Marcelo. Have to take on Pulquier. That's three men waiting in the box there. Not quite sure what he was trying to do. He might be trying to fill in the ball into the box. Well, it's going to be Pitti to come on for Granada, from a Rayo striker. And the players left on the bench today by um, Alvaro Rossino. If he's beginning to rue that decision. They play now anyway. Modric over the bar. Luka Modric, fantastic player, but he's never been a prolific goal scorer, even in his days in the Premier League with Tottenham. And he perhaps played in a slightly more advanced position than he plays now for Real Madrid. Played more out wide though, at the same time Tottenham tended to play a little bit more towards the left. Not on the wing, but sort of that left side of a diamond. Baran, Modric, Tony Cruz, Marcelo. Nice run forward there from James to Benzema, who might fancy his chances of scoring another goal. It's again, the own selfish from the Frenchman. Well, Pity here. Interesting to see who comes off. Possibly Kandesh might be a candidate. Pity tends to slot in, and that's left sided attacking role. Could be Rochina to make way as well. It's a bit of a balloon, as they say, but Benzema's controlled it, and that is 5 0 to Real Madrid. Karim Benzema allowed to control a ballooned corner on his chest before scoring with a volley. And really, we've seen. The Granada defence and Real Madrid all the time in the world in the first half and they've carried on in that vein in the second. Let's have a look at this again. I mean, it's not actually a good corner. Look how that balloons up. He's controlled it and it's a lovely volley. But sorry, in top quality football, top class football, you shouldn't be able to get away with doing that in a penalty area. Juan Carlos and Baba just ball watching and then they just let it drop. And uh, Benzema just simply steps inside them and a simple finish. Training ground goal from the Frenchman. Who deserves it as well because you look you watch his play and it's true he's a striker but he's always unselfish in his movements he's always unselfish in his vision he's always looking to try and pick out his companions so certainly deserves his goal the frenchman 14th league goal of the season for Karim benzema and now scored in his last four league games and it was right is rochino okay who's come off by the way and pity's delighted to get on after madrid have just scored the fifth of the afternoon Imagine Rochina probably equally delighted to get off the field. Cristiano. Modric. Rondo now from Real Madrid. Cristiano again, he's going to go for glory. No, indeed, he isn't. He gives it to James. Fokier. 
deflects that one wide for a corner. And there's going to be another substitute coming on very soon for Granada. Looked like it was the Colombian Jason Murillo going to come on. Central defender. Oof. Could have been. That could easily have been the six there as Benzema was once again totally unmarked. So I think that there's always a phrase, isn't there, called closing the stable door when the horse has bolted. The horse hasn't actually bolted, it's, it's about five miles down the road at the moment for Granada. The horse is long gone. There's a trail of dust. And it's going to be six, indeed it is, Gareth Bale setting up Cristiano Ronaldo. Aye, so that's, that's, that's an I'm an OK, I think, sort of rubbing of his knee. 6-0 to Real Madrid against Granada. Two goals in the opening ten minutes of this second half. And if Granada felt as though Real Madrid might take it easy on them after the break, then it certainly hasn't been the case. The whole ring for Real Madrid will be safe to Cristiano Ronaldo's knee. Quest possible offside there. I'm going to say against Bale. No offside against Ronaldo. Who does ooh, catches himself there, doesn't he, against the post? the first place to do so this afternoon. I think the best of Ronaldo, but ever Cristiano Ronaldo just cracked his knee on that post as he, I mean, he heads got home a, his fourth. He do worry about his... Oh, he does, actually, and that is... Is that his bad knee, his left knee? I think it is as well. Yeah, well, that's might, the knee he's had problems with. Ouch, when you see it that way, actually, it looks a lot worse. Ooh, ow. I'm not sure if that's offside. I think that is just offside, to be honest. It's very Great. tight. Very tight, but Granada just walking out there, allowing Real Madrid yeah, to fight in behind them. If Abel did, if Abel's team talk at halftime for Granada was okay, lads, let's try and keep it tight in the first ten minutes, then they haven't exactly um, taken any notice. Taken any notice. <laughs> all credit to Real Madrid. All you can do is beat your rivals as comfortably and as confidently as possible 7-0 <laughs> Granada are absolutely woeful second goal for Karim Ben Thema really turning into a turkey shoot now for Real Madrid Granada well if they were hopeless in the first half they've if anything been worse in the second half any remnants of the is, discipline has gone look, out the window the thing is as I say, all you can do for all Real Madrid to do is beat their rivals with as many goals as possible. Good idea from Ancelotti taking off Cruz, bringing on Iyara. We see again Benzema given the freedom of the penalty area by Granada. Diego Mainz really looks as though he's given up there. Benzema doing what he wanted. A little bit of luck with the deflection, but... I'll tell you what, if I was Abel... I wouldn't make any substitutions now. I wouldn't. I don't think it's fair to submit a substitute to the humiliation of having to come on now. I would make the players who started the game finish it now. Because they, they have been. Madrid have been very good, but Granada have been awful, awful. He does have to think about the game in Madrid though against Delta. Next week's game against yeah. San Maria. Most of these players aren't going to play in midweek, though, are they? That's the whole thing. And we can see four goals for Cristiano Ronaldo, two for Karim Benzema. But the problem is, I mean, and I do think part of the fa fact of this is, is something we're discussing at half time, is that in Spain it does come down to head to head goal average rather than general goal average, such in England. Therefore, there's no incentive for Granada to, apart from pride, to keep it tight because. At the end of the day, if, if it comes down between, for example, them and Almeria, it would be the side who has the best goal average. So, if that, for example, I don't know what the first meeting was between, for example, Granada and Almeria, but that could well be a decisive match. If it was a draw, then obviously just by beating Almeria, they would have a better goal difference at the end of the season. Indeed, it was. So they drew 0 0 so in the Estadio. So by beating El Maria 1-0 next weekend, they would actually, if the two sides were level, that finish above advantage. them. Unless there were then three sides and then it would come into a little league between the three, but it all gets a bit confusing then. So for a team at the bottom of the table, it doesn't really matter if you have a goal average at the end of the season of minus 60. It's what your goal average is in comparison in your results against your direct rivals that makes the difference. 
if the head-to-head -head record between you and your direct rival is equal, then goal average comes in. To tends not to happen very often, though. Tends not to happen, exactly. Saying that no footballer particularly wants to be on the end of a second of a seven nil hammering. Well as Hesse, who was also warming up, struggled to come back after his knee cruciate knee ligament operation. Not at the minutes he perhaps would have wanted to, but obviously with Bale, Ronaldo and Benzema playing it's once again he's in a similar situation to Chicharito. And also if I was a Madrid fan I'd be a little bit worried by some of the pictures and videos I've seen of Hesse with his musical mates, etc., etc., he just just worries slightly about that. Maybe his focus hasn't always been on recovery. You have to think these players are young and it's 20 years if, you old, are, they? if you are out of action for a long time, you've got a long period of recovery ahead of you. He's basically was sidelined for 10 months, wasn't it? 10 or 11 months, but possibly could have gone, should have gone on loan in January to get match time. But obviously at the time did look as if Madrid would get a bit further in the cup and that would have given him the, once again, the going out of the cup's probably a bit of a hidden handicap for them in that question. Here's Cristiano. Is he going to try and go for his fifth? Well, he is, not far away. Not going to bet against that happening today. After that seventh goal as well, Granada did make a substitution. Fran Rico's gone off and Eddie Silvestre came on. And they're about to make another substitution as well. Here's Jason Murillo's come on the centre half just to show things up at the back. There goes Bavan. Yeah, oh, making his way off. Rather tip. <laughs> Not getting a great round of applause from the Granada fans there, Bavan. No, I think. The away fans here today. I think if you see, it actually says Peña, Granada, Madrid. The away fans who've made the trip from the outskirts of Madrid or whatever it is, and they're based. Another substitution for Madrid. Nice moment for James Rodriguez to come off. Perfect game in which to give him 60 minutes on his return to action after two months out with a broken bone in his foot. And James has replayed, repaid Ancelotti rather with a good performance here today. And bodes well for the rest of the season. And Jesse uh, gets 30 minutes, which will do him a lot of good as well. See the horror show from Granada at the back. Chicharito also gets on. It's a bit harsh, and Benzema doesn't get the chance for his hat trick. Again, Reynolds. Intelligent. It's intelligent for Mancelotti because he's brought in two players who have something to show. Pese wants to show that he, he could be pressing for more of a more first team action. Same for Chicharito, who will want to also back up his words with goals so he's resting key players but bringing on players who are going to be motivated also april is one of the months with most games for real madrid this season eight matches six in the league and two in the champions league yeah, there's two rounds of midweek fixtures aren't there so Ancelotti have to bear in mind the fact that he's not playing more games than usual he's played on there the referee Just for a moment if cristiano controlled that with his hands he might have thought he came back off his. <laughs> I think they would have. Once again, it would have been the eighth of the game, but I think you can't really allow a striker to play on after that, can you? Well, it depends on interpretations of handball these days. Handball interpretation of the, the is, if law getting, is very different to the way it used to be. If you're getting a clear advantage from something like that. But in fact, that's. There's a lot of confusing talk about the handball, though. If you actually look in the laws of the game in the FIFA, it doesn't say anything about gaining an advantage. It's simply whether it potentially handles the ball or not. Un I think in England, the con the, in the Premier League, the, sort of the interpretation, they try to keep it as an unnatural movement of the arm, which then involves it hitting the, the ball. But again, who decides whether movements of the arm are unnatural or not? It's reflex. It's, it's fun. No, that, that was probably a reflex action. You know, as, but as how many times you see penalties given because the ball in a def, someone in the defensive wall sees the ball's going to hit him in his face and he puts his arm up, which is a reflex action. Yeah, it's something that players can't avoid. If, if ever you play football, you realise that you simply do it involuntarily. Oh yeah. 
So, 63 minutes gone, Real Madrid, I think cruising, I think is the, is the word, isn't it? 7-0 at home to Granada today. Even without Tony Cruz, they're cruising in the second half. Yeah. It's bad pun time, isn't it now? Bad challenge there on Luka Modric. Now that is, believe it or not, the first booking of the game, which possibly says something about the way Granado defended. Nasty challenge from Piti. There is that thing, isn't it? Often after the game, in analysis, people will look at the amount of yellow cards and say mm. perhaps the lack of yellow cards showed a lack of intensity or but a lack of commitment. Madrid's last home game against Levante, they won 3-0. There was, you know, if you remember, people remember some of the games that you used to see between Levante and Real Madrid that were basically trench warfare. Um, Levante typically one of the toughest, most physical teams in Spain, didn't have anyone booked. The only player booked in that game was Ramos. Gareth Bale. Oof. I think a lot of people thought that might have gone in for number eight. As it is, just wide of the post. Gareth Bale whipping in a free kick with his left foot. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, well, Lothaba would have got across there. Struck it well over the wall. I think the duo was out whether or not he'd have got to that. Fortunately for Granada. Just a couple of inches wide of Lothaba's left hand post. Just gone into a bit of a lull with those substitutions and those three early second half goals. Yeah, 20 minutes. Madrid. 20 minutes gone in the second half and it's a 7 0. It is, even if it's Real Madrid, it's, it's getting into humiliation territory, isn't it? And it really sort of result that does a lot of damage to a coach, especially you know, especially if they then don't win the, get the following game. Exactly, for as much as Rosino may think that. This game doesn't matter, and it's the two games coming up that are more important for this side. Still not ideal preparation for going into two important matches to be humiliated in the Santiago Bernabeu. And that's what you've got to do. If you can then motivate your players and give them an enormous bronca, as they would say in Spain, stiff talking to, um, then yeah, fair enough. And that, But that's what we're saying. It is slightly disappointing sometimes that for, for teams like Malik, for Granada, this doesn't really matter. It's what, what matters is what they then do against Celta and Almeria. Yaramendi. So Ronaldo clips that one in. Cristiano Ronaldo. Seems to be moving fairly freely after cracking the yeah. post with his knee. Doesn't seem to have had too many after effects. That'd be good news for Madrid fans. Jesse. It does look just a little bit heavier than before his injury, perhaps. I'm saying that is logical, isn't it? If he's not been able to train with the same intensity. Yaramendi. The important thing for Jesse now will be to have a good pre-season before next season. What's a oh. decent ball from Marcelo? Oh, yeah! Claims that header from Chicharito. Another good opportunity from Real Madrid. Another simple cross in. Uh, where was the marking? I think Chicharito just wandering in between Murillo obviously he's still asleep even though he's come on in the second half just allowing them to get right in behind him it's a decent cross you know he doesn't act but the thing is Chichi doesn't actually do any special movement he just sort of wanders in there nobody goes with him and all of a sudden he has a free header inside the penalty area PT down Ramos falls on top of Maxi Dental. So having made their three substitutions, they wouldn't want to then lose a player through injury. And that would be the icing on the cake, wouldn't it, so to speak? It's going to be quite a flat, quiet flight back to Granada after this match. Bale, nice pass. 
to Ronaldo look to return it and that's a Granada throw says Mr Gil Manzano had a very easy afternoon here there's not too much to do Gil Manzano just that shot from El Arabi in the first half fantastic effort just bounce back to the crossbar initially it appeared that it may have crossed the line but I think looking at the replays we decided that it probably did bounce on the line certainly the closest Granada have got to getting a goal here this afternoon Bale puts it across oh yeah claims it well it, it actually looked quite solid didn't he until the third goal or year on a Thabal and obviously with the third and fourth goals he he got to put a slight question mark over him certainly the third when he flaps at the cross and the fourth when he probably should have dealt with Cristiano's shot a bit more effectively hasn't had an afternoon to remember we got a Thabal but I think he's had an afternoon to, he hasn't had an afternoon to remember but he's had an afternoon he probably isn't going to forget exactly but to be fair to him, he probably hasn't been any worse than the rest of his teammates. Well, exactly. Most of the time, he's looked quite solid, just had a couple of bad couple of the goals. Silvestre plays the ball in. Eddie Silvestre, second half substitute for Granada. Interesting story. He's got an Angolan father and an Azerbaijani mother. Uh, where did they meet? Good question. Almeria, I think. Grew up in Almeria. That's where he started his career. Maybe Al Madrid coming forward again. Gareth Bale into space and Cristiano puts it wide. And easily being the fifth there for Cristiano and an eighth for Real Madrid. Gareth Bale setting up the opportunity with a good pullback from the left hand Once side. Once again, it's Cristiano who gives the pass. It's very much very similar to the third goal. He gives it and then goes. Nobody then follows the run. Although he is quick, it has to be said. I think it's the ball just caught behind him and he has to almost go backwards to get his shot in. In the end, just screws it wide. 20 minutes remaining. Chicharito looking to put Cristiano through again. It's interesting that Cristiano's not come off as well. I think that implies that He's very much going for that Pichichi award. Bale can't keep that one in. Well, when you're as competitive as the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo or Leo Messi, they frankly never want to come off. They want to play every minute of every game. I think sometimes you do have to think about the, the overall good of the season, though. As you said, it's going to be a really busy month of April. Those two Champions League matches against... Atletico Madrid, two midweek rounds of fixtures in La Liga. Remember that the Champions League quarterfinals played with a space of just one week. So you've got two vital games against Atletico in the space of eight days. First game in the Calderon? If I remember rightly, I think the first game is in the Calderon. Yeah. Although it's one of those times where I don't think home advantage is such a factor. It's not as if you have to travel to another country, etc., etc. You have to get on the, on the 27 bus. Arbeloa on the overlap. And Cristiano, once again, he is looking for that fifth goal, isn't he? Very much looking for that fifth goal. And two opportunities in quick succession. They ball over to the right-hand side. And a little bit of manhandling from Murillo. They have on Chicharito. And Cristiano Ronaldo just... Not quite as sharp, perhaps, as he was in the first half. But you sense that perhaps there are more goals in this game. Perhaps more goals for Cristiano Ronaldo. Just about just under 20 minutes. say people have come to the burn about today obviously a holiday Sunday lots of possible regular season ticket holders out of town on on Easter Sunday so it's given a chance for many a lot of people in town to see a one-off occasion to well, basically see Real Madrid score a lot of goals which is obviously what they want isn't it obviously if you come from Granada 
Maybe not. Oh yeah, picks the ball up. 17 minutes left in this game. 7-0 Real Madrid lead against Granada. The highest number of goals they scored this year was actually in, in La Coruña when they put eight past Depot. Chicharito scored a couple of screamers in that game, actually. And here's a chance for Granada! Well, they've scored. How about Ivanez? Ivanez. Clean through on goal. Took it well. Kept his cool. Yeah, out of lower. Almost brought him down. I think I he just. I don't think there's a real. You've got to be intelligent, haven't you? There's no point in picking up. Well, for Avalo, it would be at least, would have been at least a booking a red card for a professional foul when you're 7 0 ahead. So Ibanez not bothering to celebrate for the obvious reasons. Just beats the offside trap. Finishes well. Has to be said, finishes well. Eke a little bit frustrated, but it's always difficult when you're one on one from close range. He gets a foot on it. A bit unfortunate, the keeper there. A nice finish from Robert Ibanez. It's his third goal for Granada in the league since joining from Valencia in January. Sometimes you wonder, though. There's a slight face. Let sleeping dogs lie. You know, seven. Will that just have annoyed Real Madrid? Rather than just letting the clock tick around, are they now going to try and bite back again? with that challenge from Silvestre there, Marcelo. It's back heel there from Gareth Bale. Silvestre. A bit stronger in the challenge. Cristiano. Marcelo once again looking for Cristiano. Volley's over. 15 minutes left. 7-1 to Real Madrid now that distance just cut back by Raul Ibanez. Well, Granada just taking advantage of the fact that Cristiano Ronaldo had missed a couple of good chances in the minutes before Ibanez's goal. Easily been 8 or 9 nil. 7 1 gives slightly more respectability to the scoreline. No, I think. no, it doesn't. <laughs> We're saying that Once you're getting into rugby scores, it doesn't really matter. Madrid did score eight in the yeah. against Deportivo, but I think Deportivo got two on that day, yeah, didn't they? Yeah. So. Let me tell you, it wasn't a great consolation at the Depot fans. Improved slightly since then, Depot, but they're just in a bad run of form at the moment. Play Getafe this afternoon. In Getafe, if they lose that, it'll just get a little bit unpleasant for Victor Fernandez's side. Another one of those sides at the bottom, though, working very much on a shoestring. Still just a point toward the relegation zone, the Galicians. So so what are these sides against, that could be affected by the Almeria situation? It'll be a battle against the drop of the rest of the season, you'd imagine. To be fair, the way things are going at the bottom, though, with a couple of wins, you just put so much clear water between you and the rest of the teams involved. And I think uh, there'll be people starting to worry in the Basque country as well about Eibar, the way they've plummeted down the table. No. Lost again on Friday, didn't they? Yeah. The I think that was one they, they had circled in big letters to try and beat Rayo as well. But the fact is, they are in the situation. If they win, they could find themselves eight points clear still. So, shots driven in there from El Arabi, but wide of Ika Casillas' goal. Ika's taking it to Jesse. You look at Granada's running for the season as well after those final games against. Elder and Almeria, they've got two very tough games coming up there at home to Sevilla and the Lucien derby and then they have to go to the Mestalla to take on Valencia. Oof. Sevilla in excellent form at the moment, played very well yesterday to be an athletic club. And Mestalla is another impenetrable fortress at the moment. And they have to go to the Calderon on the last day of the season as well, so... Could this be number eight? Oh, yeah! Just palms it over. Again, simple for Real Madrid. Another offering up plenty of space at the back inside the penalty area. All teed up nicely for Gareth Bale, like Cristiano Ronaldo. 
looks to place it rather than to go for power there, Bale. Yeah, just a nice line for the goalkeeper to tip it over the crossbar. Tenth corner for Real Madrid, Granada forcing just one in that time. With a decent delivery. Granada actually getting ahead on the corner. Yaramendi does well. There's Kande. Oh, player down. Two players down. Bale and... Looks like El Arabi, I yeah. think. We'll see both of them on their feet quickly. Ouch. It's El Arabi who actually got the header on it. And Bale just clutching him. Yeah, you're going to have the striker showing his defenders how it should be done. Going all the way at the near post. Very comfortable afternoon for Carlo Ancelotti. Yes, less, less comfortable perhaps for Abel, who might have a few tricky questions to answer in the press conference. We might even see a Dukic from Abel Resino. I decided it might be time to lay into his players in public. I think not. I don't think Abel Resino is that kind of coach, but I'm sure privately he'll have one or two things to say. But the problem is, if what, what message has he sent to his players by resting normal starters to come to the Bernabeu? What is basically is the message he's sent out is, well, this game isn't as important to us. We're, we're resting players. We're bringing in keep. We're bringing in fringe players. Okay, you can say, well, the fringe players might say we have our opportunity, but part of the message you're sending is, well, we ain't going to get anything from this. And apart from the opening. 15, 20 minutes or so, when Granada seemed to hold their own as soon as they went behind, then really the floodgates opened. It's good running from Sergio Ramos, looks for the return. Chicharito turns nicely. Jesse, a little bit slow onto it, but the referee's already blown. For a free kick. It's a good thing about two about a twelve o'clock kickoff in the middle of Madrid is it's just perfect time to go for lunch afterwards. I think it's one of the attractions of his kickoff time. A sunny afternoon, sit out in a terrace. I'm sure Carlo Ancelotti will have a nice lunch waiting for him after this game. Chill glass of Blanco. Don't mind if I do. Cristiano will fancy his chances of working all year from the free kick. Ten minutes left to play. Looking for what would be his fifth goal of the game. There he is, Ronaldo. Through the wall, but wide. Did that come off the wall? No. Was it, did it go straight through the wall? It all seems like a strange trajectory. Must have dragged it wider Let's the have wall. Have a look. Right, it goes straight through the defensive wall. That's what you want when you're a goalkeeper, though, isn't it? Fortunately, he was missing El the target. I think El Arabi was just praising his defensive work at the corner, but there he just simply jumped out the way of the ball. And that is a bit lucky that. <laughs> that is I know they got away with it, but that is just dreadful. Dreadful. Modric. Oh, yeah, that's what you want, own goal. 8-1. There you go, mine's the captain, the unlucky man. Well, as if it's, it's going to go wrong, you might as well have it all go wrong when you're 7-1 down. 8-1 to Real Madrid. Diego Mainz, um Frank. putting past his own goalkeeper to round off what's been a pretty horrible afternoon. I think the Granada fans are almost finding it funny as well. Ball down the line for Modric. Good cross in. We are uh, unable to cut it out. Uh, once the keeper can't get there, it's always difficult for defenders when they're back towards their own goal. But you have to say, Mike wasn't really He does get a bit of a view of it there. He has, a, he has quite a good view of it there coming. He probably thought, I just don't want to let Cristiano score a fifth there. I'm going to put it away. He hasn't really under too much pressure. 
I think it's just all been too much. The question is, Diego Mainz. question is, could we get double figures? Well, if Cristiano Ronaldo would put away those two chances earlier on, we'd already be there, but there's still seven minutes or so. I'm not sure how much injury time the yeah. referee will want to add on. Uh, uh, probably minutes. Sort of add on minus seven, I think, for Granada. Yeah, I wonder when the, I couldn't tell you when the last time a team a league game in Spain ended with a side getting double figures. It's something probably happened in the 1930s, but this could well be the case. Had Cristiano made a bit of contact on that ball, he's missed about five chances in scoring his fourth goal, hasn't he? I think we should probably put it down as a bad afternoon for him. We're well, talking about double figures. I think if he'd have been right on the top of his game, we'd already be there. Another opportunity. All bounces up with it. I'm going to get angle. a quick montage of a few of the girls. It's the first one, 25 minutes now. We're not going to get a montage of the girls. 8-1. Second time this season, Real Madrid have scored eight goals in La Liga. Say so they did it away to Depor. This is now heading for Granada's biggest defeat of the season. Unless they can have another one here. They lost 6-0 at camp now. They were pretty grim in the camp now as well. I mean, this that says it all, doesn't it? They lost 6-0 in the camp now when they were very poor. And they've had eight put past them here. But it doesn't matter. That's the whole problem with the head-to-head -head goal average, which means it doesn't matter. They did lose 5-1 in the Sanchez Pizjuan as well against Sevilla. Was that the defeat that cost Caparos his job? I'm not sure. That was earlier in the season. Marcelo! Cristiano puts it over. See, that's the thing is, uh, Granada were originally co coached by Joaquim Caparos. To see a Caparos coached side, okay, he's left now, be so porous, it is surprising. More than anything, but the size of the bottom as well. As, you, as we've been saying, it's not so much a question of how many goals you concede, it's, it's when you concede the goals and the important fixtures. It's those goals that you concede. Granada, I think that's done them most time this season is the fact that they've only scored 19 goals in 29 matches. I think that's a far more relevant statistic than the amount of goals conceded. Well, John, let's just let's give you a quick... Have they played Barca twice this season yet, or just once? No, they've played away and at home against Barca. At home it was? They lost 3 1 at home. Right, well, let's just think about this. They played Barca twice, they conceded nine goals against Barca. They've played Real Madrid twice, they've conceded 12 goals in two games against Real Madrid. What does that mean? That means they've actually conceded against just Real Madrid and Barcelona more goals than they have scored in the entire season. They conceded 51 goals overall. It's a fairly high percentage of goals conceded. So they've scored 19 goals and they've conceded 21 goals in two games against Madrid and Barca. So even just with those two rivals, the, the goal difference is minus two. So they've scored 20 goals. I forgot the goal they've scored today. Still nothing to get excited about. I was, about. I was counting that goal. They've scored oh, 18 right. before today. I didn't want to do them an injustice by not counting, so they're yet to reach 20 goals. Albaloa picks up a booking, means he gets a nice little rest against Raya. Albaloa, one of several players just booking away from suspension. Cristiano Ronaldo, Modric and Sergio Ramos still out there. They're booked and missed the game in Vallecas as well. Not a massive amount in that from Albaloa. They see the foul count, 12 fouls in the entire game. Given the nature of Spanish refereeing, is extremely low indeed. We used to see 20 or 30 fouls in a game. Three of those fouls committed by Arbelo. Marcelo losing out. With And it was almost good until the end, and there, Ica makes a smart save from Silvestre. Yaramendi trying to close down the Granada midfielder. And in the end, it goes out for a goal kick. Just over two minutes left, Real Madrid leading. Your eyes are not deceiving you by eight goals to one against Granada. 
Oh, is. those goals scored by Cristiano, two by Benzema, one by Gareth Bale, and an own goal by Diego Mainz. Here's Bale. Goes down. That's going to be a booking. I suspect, indeed, it is. Murillo came on as a substitute. I think after the seventh goal went in, did he, Murillo? Didn't exactly. Hasn't exactly got himself in glory since coming on. A little bit late there on Bill. I think you can have too many complaints three about that. About four metres late, actually. Can have too many complaints about the yellow card. It's challenging for a very miffed defender. Perhaps Ronaldo needed a bit more of that in the first half. It's a bit late now. Modric will take the free kick. Modric, good delivery, unmarked, Cristiano scores his fifth of the game, 9-1 to Real Madrid. Well, I think that free kick sums up Ronaldo's performance really here today in the Bernabeu, it's just a simple free kick to the far post, and some really shoddy, sloppy defending, allowing Cristiano Ronaldo a free header at the far post, he's missed a couple of chances in this second half, but... I don't think he was going to miss that opportunity to score five in a game. Uh, so which is why he stayed on 36th goal of the season, 9-1. That's the heaviest defeat I've seen in La Liga in, once again, good movement. But Murillo, who committed the foul originally, loses him. And in the end, relatively straightforward header for Cristiano Ronaldo. Good leap. Nothing Oyer can do about that one. Again, not many of the goals today. It's a good ball in. But Murillo, yeah, just losing his man. Ball watching. Cristiano Ronaldo with a good header at the far post. It's been a prolific afternoon for Cristiano Ronaldo and a prolific afternoon for Real Madrid. 9-1. I certainly don't remember a team reaching double figures in recent years in La Liga. Remember, won a few eight or nine goal victories, but no, I mean it's very rare you get seven. You know, eight is you know, a special or disastrous, depending on which way you look at it. Nine, I can't honestly remember last time seeing I saw a side score nine goals. Just one minute of injury time. Little Manzano being kind to Granada. I remember Pep Guardiola's last side winning eight nil Al Maria in the league. Beyond eight. Well, we're not going to get ten because Gil Manzano says that's enough, folks. Nine one for Real Madrid and the Madrid coach Ancelotti Yero going over and basically consoling Abel Recino, the Granada coach, who is even though it's Real Madrid and even though Ronaldo has scored five goals, he's going to have to answer a few difficult questions. I think Real Madrid, well. Believe it or not, they didn't score until the 25th minute. And then, let's be honest, the floodgates opened. Bale, Ronaldo, Ronaldo, 